Hey everybody. A couple of things to note before we get started here. This particular unit was provided to me by HP, not for free. It was roughly 50% discount, and I'm supposed to do a review on it, say a couple things on social media and whatnot. To HP's credit, they did not ask me to only say nice things, however, so we're going to put it through its paces and we're going to see what it's really good at and what it's not so good at. But starting off, we're going to unbox it. And to do so, we're going to have to remove these little styrofoam corner pieces here. Those are in place, of course, to protect the inner box during shipping. So if anything happens to the outer box, it shouldn't destroy the product. We'll stack those up, throw them on the floor. It'll take me a few seconds to realize that throwing them on the floor was a terrible mistake because Punisher wants to eat them. So pick them up, put them on a table to keep Punisher safe from herself, and then we'll move back on to getting this inner box out of the outer box. Now, this inner box is a little bit heavier than I thought it was going to be, which makes sense since it does have the printer in it, but it just takes me a second to get it out. Just let the outer box fall to the floor, put the inner box down on the table, and the only thing left inside this outer box are some more of those little foam corner protector pieces. So we'll just put that back down, and we'll move on to opening up the HP box that contains the printer itself as well as the, you know, other things that come with the printer. Popping these flaps open, this one gets stuck. So, good old rusty dull knife is going to cut it right open. And then unfold the flaps also gently. Grab this one, flip it over, and then what's under here? Why it's a power cord. Nothing special. It's just a figure eight style black and gray power cord. You've probably seen them a million times, especially with HP because they put those little gray inserts in. Then we got some ink cartridges. Not one, but two. One's a color, one is a black and white. The packaging looks the same on the outside, but, you know, I figure you'd probably get them in a two-pack. If you're going to replace one, you need to replace the other anyway. Maybe. But now we're going to grab this out. A little packet of information. We'll get to that later, though. For now, we'll just set it aside. And this piece of paper I'll talk about more because it lowers my faith in humanity. So, moving on. I'm going to take this little piece of cardboard out, but it's going to get stuck. So I'm just going to leave it there while I grab this one, pull it out, get surprised by the fact that that unfolded because I wasn't expecting it, decide that Punisher can have that because bunnies love cardboard. And then almost kill Barbados while we're pulling this piece out. Sorry, Barbados. But just more of that same kind of type of cardboard. Throw that aside and grab this little cardboard strap looking thing. We're going to use that to tug on the printer oh so gently, pull it out. It is in some little vacuum sealed plastic there, real nice stuff. Just some more cardboard in the bottom of that inner box, and now it's out of the way. Put this guy down on the table, you get a little view of the bottom there, a little view of the front, a little bit of the top, and there we go. And here we switch to the overhead camera with an appearance by Bunisher down there while she's playing with all the cardboard that I've dropped on the floor for her. And the printer itself, you can see it's still packaged up there, it's still got its plastic on it. We're going to go over this little guy right here. This is an ink cartridge warning that came with it, and it explains to you that you shouldn't drink the ink. Sad that we need that in this day and age, but there it is. Up next, we're going to move on to the paperwork that comes with the printer, and it is held together with this nifty little cardboard strap thingy right here. Easy enough to take off. And first thing that it gets and gives you is the setup guide. And it is a guide to setting up your printer in a guided manner. Uh, it tells you things like remove all the packaging and tape, open the cartridge access door, install the required software. If, yeah, from 123hp.com. And then on the back side, it just tells you again to remove the little cardboard plug dealy and follow the other instructions that come with it. And it's just a single sheet of folded paper with some instructions. Nothing too special there. Pretty standard fare. And next up, you've got some information on the HP Instant Ink System, which is pretty cool. You save about 50% on ink by signing up for this. It gives you a monthly fee depending on how much you're going to be using it. The printer sends out a signal to HP. They will ship you new ink and deduct it from the card that you have on file. Again, pretty cool program. Saves a little bit of money on ink. We all know that printer ink is pretty expensive. This little package right here is a package of sample photo paper that came with it two types of sample photo paper in here we've got three sheets of glossy photo paper and we've got three sheets of matte finish photo paper 
the matte finish photo paper is the um, the larger four by six inch and the five by five inch is the more squared away glossy photo finish um not much to say about them really they're just standard photo paper no difference between them other than the finish on them and the size and shape of the pieces itself so you know three of each it's a good little sample size for printing some some sample photos which of course I did, because as being a photographer, one of my primary interests with this printer was how well it was going to handle printing photos, and a little bit of a spoiler alert, um, a lot better than I thought it was going to. Next we have this reference guide. Uh, the reference guide is full of information that you probably don't care about, and it's in case you have issues with it so that you can, you know, reference it and try to fix whatever issue it is that you're having, tells you how to put the ink in, stuff like that, but... It is, in this day and age, you know, we've got Google, so we probably don't need reference guides anymore, but it is nice that it's there just in case you're not someplace with an internet connection. Then we have some information on the HP Plus program. Um, this program helps your printer stay connected, so it's necessary for that, uh, for the instant ink program. You have to have this for it. This program doesn't cost anything. It's free. Um, it says on there where I was pointing that it's six months of printing included. Um, that's sort of a... We'll talk some more about that later because you don't have to pay for this program. More. Different language on the back side there in case you're interested in reading it in... I think French? That might be French? Uh, it doesn't look like Spanish, but anyway. This is now your warranty information. Right there. Limited warranty. Um, of course, anytime you get a new product like this, you want to get the warranty set up, so... In case something happens, you can deal with it. And we're just going to take these things, all this stuff, we're going to put it aside a little bit farther off camera than I probably should have, meaning that you know, it's taking a little bit longer to get back here. But we're going to take a look at the power cable, and I was about to take it out, and then I realized, eh, you don't want to see that. So, again, it's just a standard figure eight little power cable you see with a lot of stuff nowadays. And the ink is the uh, Instant Ink Ready 64. It says that on both of them, so I'm guessing that one is black and one is colored, but I didn't really pay that much attention when I took them out of the box. But don't, don't, don't drink them. All right, let's get this plastic cut uh, with my incredibly dull razor knife. That, that was just embarrassing. But yeah, taking the plastic off is pretty standard. So um, we'll just fast forward through the rest of this process. And slow it back down again, because of course, everybody likes to watch the peel porn. Got a little bit here on the HP logo, just gonna grab that corner and oh, so satisfying. And then of course the little touch screen on the front there, grab it nice and close up and peel it on down with my flaky dry fingers. Despite the ease with which I was able to get the hardware all set up and going, the software wasn't playing as friendly. As you can see here from this little spin in blue circle, the activation of the HP Plus on my printer did not go as according to plan. It took me until the next day with several tries in between before I was finally able to get it hooked up and online. What HP Plus does is it connects your printer to their cloud service and it lets them know when you're low on ink. So if you're using the instant ink program, they can get you some more ink sent out so that you'll have more before you actually run out. You can do that with paper too, and it also does some stuff with your um, with your app your, on your smartphone if you're going to be using that. All in all, it wasn't a particularly painful process. It just, for whatever reason, the server just wouldn't connect that first night, so it had to wait till the next day for it. But once that was installed and I was all up and running, which I didn't need to have to do prints, by the way, but I just wanted to make sure that everything was installed correctly first. But then I figured it was time to print some prints, since a printer is only good as the prints that it prints out. So um, let's get to printing and see how this printer prints. I decided to start the printing test on this particular printer with the photo paper that it came with. So using the 5x5 five five square sheet of high gloss photo paper. I wanted to print out this picture of a red tail hawk, so I put it into Photoshop. I 
crunched it down, cropped it to a five by five and ran it through the printer with some pretty decent results. After having some pretty promising results on my initial test print, which I will be showing you in a moment, I decided to put this particular new printer directly up against my mainstay photo printer. This is an Epson Surecolor P900. It is a about a twelve to thirteen hundred dollar printer, so it's significantly more expensive than the HP. But I thought the HP's image quality was sufficient that it warranted a test up against something that I knew was going to do better, but I wanted to see just how close it would get. And um, a little bit more on that after I talk about the initial print that I did as the test image photo. So the first picture we printed is a picture I took of a red-tailed falcon. It's on the glossy sample paper that it came with, and as you can see it turned out pretty good, although the blacks are a little bit inky and reflective which isn't great. So moving forward with the test uh, directly against the Epson printer, I decided on one of the photos that I took here in Pennsylvania, of a valley that my wife and I came across while we were working, and it was just a beautiful day. It was a beautiful shot. I decided, you know what, I'm gonna take it, and I did. Glad I did. After a little bit of editing in Photoshop, it turned out to be a really nice image, and I decided to print it on both of these printers. Now, important to note, for this is the paper type that I'm using for this is an Epson metallic print paper. So it is a glossy photo paper that has a metallic sheen to it. Normally you have to have a pretty specialized printer like the Epson here in order to get the metallic effect out of this paper. However, um, the HP did just fine. It printed a beautiful image. It did a really good job. It has the metallic sheen to it in certain areas, interestingly enough, in different areas than what the Epson did, which I was really surprised by. Another something that really surprised me about this test directly up against the Epson printer was that the speed difference between the two of them wasn't that great. The Epson is faster, but not a whole lot faster than the HP. So it's able to keep up with it and it's also able to produce images of a pretty high quality that's comparable to it. The main difference is I will get into as we compare the two photos when they're finished printing. So now we've got both of the pictures side by side, the HP here on the left, which I will pick up and show you first. This one turned out, like I said, really well. The HP did a fantastic job with this print. The only real issues are some banding up here in the blue area, meaning that the gradient from top to bottom is not very smooth. Also, there's that problem with the inky blacks again. The black is, I'm not sure if it's more reflective or less, I'm probably say less in this instance. Whereas with the Epson print here, as you can see, the banding up in the corner is non-existent. So that blue is a smooth transition from top to bottom. The clouds got the more metallic effect as the blue was more metallic on the HP print, which I thought was interesting. But both printers did a fantastic job. And you can see some of that black uh, reflected in the Epson print as well. So the HP isn't the only one that was doing that and it has to do with the, um, the profile for printing this particular picture, which I didn't set up ahead of time which was an oversight on my part, but you get the idea here. And you can see that the image is brighter on the HP side and a little bit darker on the Epson. That is supposed to be like that. The Epson is supposed to be darker. It is a more true to life representation of what the actual image is since I didn't brighten any of the uh, foreground or mid ground, I should say, sorry. Which is why it's kind of interesting that the HP printed it brighter in the middle and just brighter overall, really. So the next printing test I wanted to do was to print the same photo again, only this time use regular old plain white paper stock. And as you can see, it has a decent amount of detail. It doesn't look terrible. Um, it came out pretty much like I expected it to. You don't print photos on regular paper. It's generally a bad idea. But one thing of interest is the banding that we've seen in this blue area before now is in the opposite direction and across the entire sheet of paper. I'm not sure what causes that, but I suspect that it's caused by the way the paper feeds while it's printing. So it's a stop and go, stop and go. And you can see where it stops 
and it just it doesn't quite line up perfectly it doesn't it doesn't smooth out that transition when you're printing on a regular piece of paper so i would say that since you can see it down here in the green as well it's not a color gradient that's for sure it's definitely that stop and go motion as the printer's pushing the paper through so yeah don't don't print on regular paper unless it's something for like a newsletter or something like that but if you're going for professional quality prints it's much better to go ahead and stick to the glossy type of photo paper that's going to give you the best results with this printer i wanted to try one more print on regular paper so boom goku the art style here is a lot better fit for this type of paper than the landscape photo was you can still see the banding in this image but it's not quite as noticeable as it was in the more real life actual photograph so if you needed to print out an anime figure for whatever reason this would be acceptable some further testing with the 7955e has revealed a few more issues with printing on thicker card stocks this particular stock right here is for the cricket machine and is used for making stickers if your business relies on high quality prints on stickers or anything that's going to be thick like this, I highly recommend not using this particular printer. Not only was it unable to feed the paper properly, it also had some issues with the striping on it that we've seen on some of the other prints. So in general, just not a very good use case scenario for this. So next up we're going to do a test of the scanner and I have to admit that I haven't scanned anything on any sort of flatbed glass scanner like this in many years. So what I will say about this one is that lining it up in the little corner right there, super easy, you just close the scanner bed, you come down here and you hit scan, you hit computer, you hit scan to PC because my PC is named PC and then it'll start scanning after you hit start. And as you can see, like I said, I haven't scanned in many years, but this is much, much faster than the scanners of old for sure. Here we can see the results. On the right, we have the scanned image as it's been added to the PC, and I put it up against the original file there on the left. You can see that the scan's not super impressive, but it's also not bad. It's actually a lot better than I thought it would be. Now, again, I haven't used a scanner, a flatbed glass scanner top scanner in many years so because of that i don't really know what to expect here i could be very wrong about the quality of the scan so if that's the case then get at me in the comments and let me know but i would say that the thing that pops out the most to me here is the darkness on the bottom of the screen here so that hedge row those little hay bales at the bottom there they're a little bit too dark meaning that if you were to put this into photoshop and try to manipulate it to be a little bit more like the original file if you're super talented, you might be able to get there, but I don't know if we just lost all the detail and we're not going to be able to get there because there's nothing for Photoshop to work with. Now we have a test of the duplex printing ability. For those that don't know, duplex just means that the printer is going to print out what I want it to on one side. It's going to pull the piece of paper back in, flip it over and do it on the other side. So this was pretty straightforward. The printer's pretty quick about this and did a fine job. The text was crisp and easy to read. I made it bold as well because sometimes that makes it a little bit fuzzy, but in this case, it turned out pretty good. As you can see on the front and the back, printed out just fine. I could easily read Lord of the Rings like this. So now we get to a section that I had to actually record twice. So there's a good reason that I had to record it twice. And we'll get into that after I talk about what it is that I initially wanted to talk about. And that was some of the things I don't like about this particular printer, starting with the pipe, the paper catching tray here. So as you can see, it slides out and it kind of snaps into place when it gets to the end. And then it's peach keen, jelly bean all fine. However, it also pulls out. Now when it pulls out all the way like this, it just kind of slides right back in there. It's not that big of a deal. It's not particularly difficult to work with or anything like that. It's just kind of a pain when you're trying to only slide out the tray and that happens. Now, secondly, is the way the paper loads. You open this up, you got two trays here. This upper tray holds the, you know, five by six or five by fives, whatever four by six is, like smaller photo paper, 
goes up here. Make sure that paper's pushed all the way to the back. Then you just slide that in like that, and it should be good to go. Now the underneath, you got regular paper or a larger size photo paper. Same thing, slide the paper in, and then you just kind of slide this guy back in place like that. It's a little bit rough, kind of. It's not difficult to push in, but it's a little bit stiff. Uh, you can see there the printer working it, getting that paper loaded. Now, the issue that I had actually relates directly to that. The upper tray there sometimes doesn't align properly. And when it doesn't align properly, the printer will give you an error on the screen here that tells you, hey, the photo tray is blocked. When, in fact, the photo tray is not blocked, you'll have to shut down the printer, turn it back on, reload the paper, and start all over again during a best case scenario. Now, I had a much bigger issue with this this time around, which I will get into right now. And here you can see that bigger issue I was talking about. I don't know what this error code is. I probably should have looked it up, but I didn't. Um, instead, I tried moving around the little paper tray a little bit more, trying to figure out what's going on with it. Couldn't really get it figured out, but there's a picture of the power button on it, so I figured, let's press the power button. Still nothing happened. Let's hold down the power button. So I do. And I hold down the power button for a fairly extended period of time with no results. Nothing good happening here. So I still really don't know what that error code means. But my next and last resort was unplug the printer, plug it back in. Turns out that error code was to unplug it and plug it back in. Exactly the thing I needed to do, I did. And it worked great after that. I haven't had any problems with it since. The um, HP Plus little bit of issues that I had in the beginning there signing up for that program, I imagine that was just because their servers were being hit particularly hard or something like that because the next day it worked fine and I haven't had any issues with that either. All in all, this printer's worked out of the box exactly like it should have. Of very special note is the fact that the software setup was great. As in there wasn't really any. I downloaded the app for it, ran the app, it was fine. It found the printer, no problem. Ran it just fine. Everything was great. Um, the days of printer setups and usage being a real big pain in the butt seem to be gone, and I'm sure we're all very happy for that. On the plus side, this thing does great photo quality prints as long as you're using a good photo paper. On the downside, if you're not using a good photo paper, the photo quality is not so great. Uh, the duplex printing, nice and fast. The scanner quality was absolutely sufficient. It's not wonderful, but then again, you probably get better results just using your fancy new iPhones and whatnots anyway. The biggest issue that I've had with this one is still the same one that I had when I mentioned it in the video there, and that's the paper there. Doesn't load very good. Don't like the loading process for the paper. Don't like the fact that the catch tray pulls out a little bit too easily. Makes everything messier than it needs to be. But all in all, I'd say that the HP Envy Inspire 7955E is a printer that swings for the fences and doesn't quite get a home run, but it's certainly batting out of its own league, that's for sure. Thanks for joining us on House Bunnington for this review. I hope you enjoyed yourself, and until the next time, you have yourself a great day.